So, Fred, what is meant by the term disease-modifying agents? And, and tell us about some of these. So disease-modifying agents are agents that alter the course of multiple sclerosis. So they're not designed to treat the symptoms. They don't treat the acute flare-ups. You take them to lessen the risk, the future risk, uh, of attacks, of changes on your MRI, of development of disability. Um, and this has been the testing pattern for all of the agents we have. Uh, and we ha have a whole slew of agents that I'll, I'll go through briefly um, that all do fairly similar things because that's how they were tested. And so we have the interferon betas, and there's three different preparations of interferon beta. Uh, we have glutirum or acetate. We have mitoxantrone, natalizumab, uh, teraflutamide, fingolimod, and dimethylfumarate. I'm sure our, our listeners are going to recite them all back to you instantly. Right. It was hard enough for me to reel them off. And they, those are the generic names. They have brand names that, that can be discussed with their, with their health care provider. Uh, each of these uh, agents works slightly different. The similarity is that they all alter the immune system. Most of them are what we call immunomodulating. They change the immune system such to make it uh, less likely for MS to act up. Um, only one of those agents is truly immunosuppressive, and that's, that's mitoxantrone. But they have different stress, they have different side effect profiles, but they mostly affect the, the, what's called the inflammatory component. We mentioned inflammation as part of the mechanism of action uh, the, of the disease. And so these tend to lessen the inflammation, the bad inflammation, um, but they all also have the potential to alter other things in the body, and that's with any agent, there's potential side effects. Some have more than others, but they all are a balance of dealing with the, the benefits of the agent, which should be discussed, but mostly, as I discussed, reducing relapses, lessening the risk of disability, lessening the changes on MRI, versus the individual side effect profiles, which are very different for each of the drugs, from pretty safe to have some having more severe and significant side effect profiles. And the important point here is that, that it's a rather long discussion that the individual needs to have with, with their neurologist or other healthcare provider as to what's the right agent for them. There is no single right agent for any given person, but rather it's a discussion of where are you with your illness now, what is your risk tolerance for particular side effects. Very important is what other illnesses might you have or medical conditions that these drugs could impact for better or for worse. So sometimes you could treat more than one condition with a single agent, but other times the chances of side effects or risks are greater if you have an underlying problem, like for example, diabetes um, or anything else, a heart disease. That will affect your, your uh, choices and those are the kind of things that lead to a very detailed and careful discussion with your healthcare provider. How are these medicines taken? So they're administered in a number of different ways. Um, some of them are given, and the very first one was given subcutaneously by an injection, self-injection under the skin. Uh, other, by a deeper injection, what's called intramuscular. Um, a couple of them are given by intravenous infusion. Uh, and then more recently, um, we've been able to get pills. So we have tablets or capsules that are given daily or twice daily. So it, it really is, with all of these choices, really is important that a patient have a doctor who understands all the medicines and will take the time to go through them with the person. It, it's critically important. They're, they're complicated therapies, and each one has different complexities associated with it, but it involves a very close integration between the patient and, and the physician to deal with a choosing the right therapy, how best to follow that therapy, and following it means looking to make sure as best one can the therapy is working for them, but also to make sure that there's no developing side effects or other problems with it, and if necessary, switching to another agent. And there's different ways one would do that, how you start, how you move on to other therapies. So it's important to A, get the information from your provider and forever else you want to get the information, like some of the on -site, online sites you mentioned, like nmss.org from the National MS Society. Bring your questions with you. Make sure you understand what's involved and that you get all your questions answered. 
Some of these uh, drugs can rarely cause some pretty serious, even fatal complications. Does, does that mean that patients should absolutely avoid those drugs? No. This is, again, this is a part of this rather lengthy discussion is what would be the best drug for you for any medication any medication the mildest to the most severe you've got to take a look at what are the potential benefits what are the potential risks and see what balances out best for any given individual but all of these agents have been approved and are available for us to use because they've shown a benefit and we're aware of the risks and risk of course is a moving target because some things take time to develop and see them but we know and have a pretty good idea when we should be using each one and we do use them all